Okay, so hi, I'm Mumba Finger Doo, and this is the Lady Bear Review. So it was week three on RuPaul's Drag Race, and not three minutes into the show, Jiggly was already getting red again. It was the princess this time who said to her that she should have been in the bottom two. Take note, Jiggly, when you get red hard, you are hard. Seriously, pull it together. Now, before the padding could fly, it was on to this week's mini challenge. And today, the queens had to create a butterfly-inspired headpiece for video darling Pia Martel, who showed everyone that beauty comes in all shapes and sizes, even if you have caudal regression syndrome. So important to know that. I'm serious. Anyway, Latrice and Milan's headpiece looked more like a head, but it was all over the place. Ugh, it wasn't good. But when the hot glue gun cooled, it was Kenya Michaels, Fifi O'Hara, and Jiggly Caliente who were the winners. Then it was on to this week's main challenge to create an infomercial for RuPaul's Greatest Hits album. So the queens were divided into two teams, and Jiggly and Madame Laqueer were last to be picked again. This totally pissed off Madame Laqueer because she felt she was better than that after winning last week's challenge, especially after Kenya left her hanging from a high five. I think it's due to her height. High fives go right over Kenya's head. Actually, I think most things go over her head. But that's just me. I'm serious. Anyway, so right away, Fifi O'Hara was overwhelmed by the task at hand. She didn't know where to start or what to do. Frankly, I think Fifi would be overwhelmed by Ziploc bags. But that's not the point. In her fit to hold it together, she totally dissed Sharon Needles. She told her to just slap some white powder on her face and look goth. She thinks Miss Needles only has one look. Well, it's better than that Housewives of Skankville look she's been wearing out on the catwalk, I'll tell you what. Hold it together, Sharon. I love you. You're gonna win. I'm serious. Anyway, Kenya's Michael's team, or wait, was it Milan's team? I couldn't tell because of how Milan took over. Seriously, just because you went to theater school doesn't mean you know everything. Winning an Emmy means you know everything. I'm just Dang. Anyway, the princess proved once again to be the weakest, weakest link on her team. She should seriously think about changing her name from the princess to the lady-in-waiting. I'm just saying. Then it was back to the catwalk where Natalie Cole and Glee's Amber Riley helped judge the judgeable. And there was a lot to judge, let me tell you. Willem still doesn't know how to shave her chin. The princess's then disposition didn't help her shine in the infomercial, and Dina Ritz's acting choice didn't impress anyone. But when the disco ball stopped spinning, the winner, again, was my girl Sharon Needles. And the girls who had to lip sync for their lives were Dina Ritz and the princess again. And at the end of the day, it was the princess who had to sashay away. What did we learn? That Zen belongs on the yoga mat and not on the catwalk of Sars. Who will win? Who will go home next on RuPaul's Drag Race? Find out by watching Out TV in Canada and Logo in the States. Check your local listing. And when you're done watching the drama, come back and see me and we'll dish it old school. I'm Wilma Fingerdoo and that was a Lady Bear Review. Mwah!